Hey, hey, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jenny here, the Uncrafty Crafter. Today we're gonna do a whip and chat uh, and a get to know me tag question part two. So before I get started, um, I just kinda wanted to give you um, an updated peek at what I have gotten done so far with uh, Something Sweet by Mandy Manzano at Diamond Art Club. Check out the face and the dress. Not got her face done yet. I started on her neck. Um, but her dress is beyond gorgeous. I just love it. I love all those pinks and reds. It's beautiful. So I'm going to turn the canvas around uh, so you can see her and him um, like face face together, face up, I guess is the right word. Um, yeah, I've got quite a bit left to go. What I have gotten done so far is probably about a little more than a third of the way finished. Sorry if I'm making you seasickly. And I'm sorry for the glare. Let me pull this up here. You can see what I've done so far. Uh. Yeah, there we go. So far, uh, got the dress and the bottom part of his outfit done. And like I said, working on her neck. Her hair has already started down here. It's so pretty. I just love everything about it. It's absolutely gorgeous. The ABs, you can see some of the ABs sparkling. Right there are some pink ones. And over here in her dress, uh, just look at those shine, shine, shine. So pretty. Um, yeah. So, like I said, I got about maybe a little bit more than a third of it done, hopefully. Um, I'll be close to halfway pretty soon. I'm, I am love working on this one. It's really fun. Um, and I keep it rolled up on both ends. The top end I keep rolled up. Um, so, and then I keep the bottom rolled up so that I just have the center, you know, and then I undo that roll up there and stretch it out a little further as I go. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this. Uh, rolled back up so I can get started back on it. Um, I just wanted to unroll it so you could guys guys could get a quick peek and how far I've come so far. I wish that I could say that I had more done, but you know, what's a girl to do? Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, Today was a gloomy day here. It's been super gloomy off and on all week. And like humid. Let me put my cheater readers on. So I wear regular glasses and then I wear um, readers also at the same time, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's a sight to see. But anyway, if I take my glasses off, because I'm nearsighted. If I take my glasses off, then I'm too far away from the canvas and I have to really get down close to see it. But then if I just wear readers, I still can't see. So I have to wear both in order to be able to see very clearly. But anyway, back to the gloomy, humid week. It's been raining like crazy. And... And it actually stormed the other day. We got like an actual storm. And <clears throat> I was like, we go from crazy back and forth, hot to cold, like Mother Nature is on hormone therapy or something. I don't know what the deal is with her, but so... Tell me about your all's week. How has it been so far? I hope it's been a good one. 
this is a whip and chat. So if you don't know what a whip and chat is, whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress. So if you have any, and then I just chat, and I love whenever people chat along with me, so feel free to leave any comments. Um, I'm gonna do some more of these get to know me tag questions. So this is gonna be, I did a previous one, um, my first whip and chat, I did a get to know me tag questions and um, that was kind of fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, it's always neat, I think, to get to learn odd and in things about people, you know, whenever you ask the random questions. And I just think it's pretty cool. But um, this is going to be part two of that. And I've got it up here on my computer. I'm using a website called tagquestions.net. And it's a get to know me tag. Uh, where was I going with this? Right there. Um, and I made it to question number 60. Or no, 59 was where I stopped the last time. So I'm starting with question number 60. Let's see if I can um, diamond paint, multi-place, and talk and read questions all at the same time. This could be a train wreck. Um, okay, question number 60 is, are you more inclined to build your own empire, empire or unleash the potential of others? Hmm, I tend to like want to build my own empire, but I end up doing the other, the unleashing the potential of others. You know what I mean? I just feel like um, I try to, you know, I think sometimes we're either naturally uh, followers or we're naturally leaders. And I've always tended to be the follower. Um, so, but as I've gotten older, I have learned um, cause I used to be a major people pleaser and as I've gotten older, I've learned how to not care if I please other people, you know, that happened a few years ago and it is freeing. Let me tell you to not care about making sure everybody's got that everybody's happy with what you're doing or not doing. For instance, Thanksgiving. This is just a random ramble, but for instance, at Thanksgiving, I run around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to make sure that there's enough plates, there's enough forks, glasses, everybody's got ice. My ice maker in my refrigerator is hard to use, so people like walk up to it, and they're like, how do I use this ice maker? And I'm like, it's not rocket science. Just push it until the ice comes out. But anyway, they... I'm like the one standing there, like making sure that everybody's got their ice and everybody's got plenty of, you know, salt and pepper on their mashed potatoes and there's enough white and dark meat with the turkey. And, and it's just, it, being that way, like in my entire life, it just became exhausting. And it like hit me all of a sudden one day and I'm like, why do I have to like be the one to stand there and make sure everybody's got ice? They're grown people. They can get their own ice. And if they can't figure it out, I don't have to be the one to tell them how to get the ice out of the ice maker, right? So I've learned the last few years that I don't have to be the end all be all, make sure that everybody is happy and comfortable. That's their own. They need to make themselves happy and themselves comfortable. I can't do that for them. So I learned that lesson. Now I got way off subject with about building my own empire or unleashing the potential of others. But hey, that's what you get with me. Question number 61 is, are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage it head on? 
I actually avoid conflict like the plague. I mean, I'm like, have you ever seen that little um, meme or gif or gif or whatever it's called where the little kid's like running and then he's like, oop, and turns around and runs the opposite way? If I can find that gif and stick it in this video, I will do that. But that's me in conflict. I run the complete opposite way. Um, now, I don't mind hearing about other people's conflicts or drama or whatever, as long as it's just a little bit, but I don't want to engage in it. And I, I'm not that person. I don't like drama when it pertains to me. So I'm, I'm usually never the creator of drama, I guess you could say. Thank goodness. That's but, I mean, everybody likes a little drama, right? That's why I watch soap operas. Um, okay, number 62. Are you a dog person or a cat person? I'm definitely a dog person. I'm allergic to cats, and I don't really like cats anyway. Kittens are cute, but once they grow up into cats, I just kind of feel like cats are like jerks. Like, dogs are affectionate because they love you. Cats, to me, are affectionate because they want you to love them and not the opposite. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to shake these up some. Um, I just feel like with dogs, there's like an equal opportunity there for affection. With cats, it's totally one-sided. They want... They want all the love and attention. And then when you want to snuggle, they're like, no, nope, I don't have time for you. I'm going to go over here and lick my fur and and uh, clean myself or whatever. But, um, yeah, totally a dog person. I have two dogs. One is a blind. So we always joke. Her name is Pepper. She's a rat terrier. And she is... Um, blind in one eye and the other eye was removed because she had glaucoma. So she's just completely, she can't see anything. And, um, I may have mentioned her in my last whip and chat. I can't remember. That's been a while. So can't remember much from one day to the next. And then our other dog is Poppy. She's the one that tore up my bath loofah and chewed up my diamond, or no, was that a diamond art club box? I can't remember. I think it was my diamonds. I think it was the box this kit came in. Um, yeah, she chewed a hole in the box. Oh, she is a puppy. That's what my husband always says, or I'm the one that always says she's a puppy. He gets mad at her for chewing things up, and I'm like, but she's just a puppy. So whenever she chews something of mine up and I get mad, he's always like, she's just a puppy. <sighs> That's what I get for trying to take up for her, but she is awful cute. Number 63, are you a fan of any sports teams? Yes. Um... My whole entire family is a huge, are huge fans of um, the Kentucky Wildcats basketball. So there's that. Go Cats. We bleed blue, so they say. Um, number 67, what is good about how you are living your life right now? Hmm. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I love that. Um, so, before I had kids, I worked um, as a tax preparer, which is seasonal work. But, I mean, I had other, I've had other jobs and things, but that's what I was actually doing at the time that I got pregnant with our firstborn. And so I didn't go back to work after I had him because at the time after I had him, tax season was pretty much done and um, 
So the following year when tax season started back up, I didn't go back to work because he had some issues when he was born and um, I didn't want anybody else to take care of him, you know? Um, and when I mean issues, I mean health issues. He, he just had some stuff going on and I just couldn't imagine letting someone else to take care of him. Now, my mom at the time, she was willing and able to, to watch him, but, um, I just kind of didn't want to be away from him, you know, and I was afraid that I would have felt guilty if I had have went back to work instead of being home with him. So I chose to stay home. And then later on, we found out, you know, that he had autism and stuff like that. So, I just never did go back to work. So, having someone else take care of your kids is one thing. And it's a totally different ball game when um, they have special needs. So, I guess it goes back to that whole thing. Like, nobody takes care of your kids like you do. And nobody knows your kids like you do. So... Um, but, um, staying home, being a stay-at-home mom, my computer is trying to, hold on, I have to get it back on there. Um, what was that? Where was that question? So, yeah, that's what is good about how I live my life. I love being a stay-at-home mom. Now we have another kiddo, a little girl, and she's just a year old. And so I stay home with her, and um, I've been a blogger for the last 10 years. So I do, you know, work from home. Um, and then decided to start YouTube. Uh... And I figured, you know, I've been blogging for so long and in social media for so long that I figured, hey, might as well add YouTube to my belt, you know. So, and I'm enjoying it. Um, let me see here. Next question. What's the weirdest thing you've seen in your life? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so one time my sister and I were um, going Black Friday shopping years ago. And um, we were driving down the highway just minding our own business. And, you know, back then, years ago, when people went Black Friday shopping, you were up at the butt crack of dawn. Like, you barely had enough time to get your food from Thanksgiving digested before it was time to get up and go shopping, right? And so it was dark outside, probably like five in the morning or something crazy. And we were just driving down the highway and all of a sudden right there, right in the middle of the highway was a pig just sitting right in the middle of the highway, like enough where you couldn't go one way or the other. So I called 911 and it, the pig had been hit now. It wasn't like dead, or I don't even know if it was dying, but it wasn't moving. And I saw a call 911, and this was the funny, that the pig getting hit wasn't funny, or it being in the middle of the road was, was kind of funny, but you know. So what was funny was when I called 911, the dispatcher's like, well, what county are you in? And I'm like, I told her exactly where I was at, and she said, well, right where you're at is actually, like, the county. We were, like, right on the county line. So, she didn't know which county to dispatch out. And I'm like, there's a pig in the middle of the road. It's 5 in the morning. Somebody's going to hit this thing and kill it or hurt themselves. And you want to know, just send a cop out from both counties, right? Wouldn't that be what you would do? <sighs> I'm like, I don't know which side of the, I mean, it was right there at the, literally at the county line. P 
pig right in the middle of the road. That's probably one of the strangest or weirdest things I've seen. And I've seen a lot of weird things. Next question. Mm, who is the biggest pack rat you know? I would have to say my sister. 100%. Absolutely. Let me scroll this up some. And I'm going to get a drink. You drink. Drinking water. I promise it's just water. With a metal straw. I use metal straws. Thirsty, thirsty. Okay. Number 74. Who's the first person... You call when something exciting happens. Again, my sister. Yep, if something exciting happens, she's the first person I call. I call her before I ever even call my husband. Crazy, right? But she's who I call. Um, who's the first person you call when something horrible happens? Same thing. I call my sister. Um, um, let me see the next question. Number 77. Can you close your eyes and raise your eyebrows? Oh, <laughs> let me try. Can you close your eyes? I'm closing my eyes and raise your eyebrows. I think I am. Yeah, I feel them moving up and down. Okay, number 78. Can you do a split? Used to could when I was young and fit. Now I can barely get down in the floor and change a baby's diaper and get back up without breaking my neck. Um, next question. Can you touch your nose with your tongue? Absolutely. I've, that's something that I've done for years and everybody gets a kick out of it. But yes, I can touch the tip of my nose with my tongue. I won't show you because it's gross, but yes, I can do that. Can I whistle? <whistles> can I dance? Number, the next question is, can you dance? I like to, but am I good at it? No. However, do you remember back in the 90s when, like, the early 90s when line dancing was all the rage? Yeah, everybody was line dancing back in the early 90s, and that was so much fun. There was a dance barn that we used to go to, like, once or twice a week. I would go with my cousin and her mom and dad. And, oh my God, we had so much fun. That was so, so fun. Loved it. And then, I, you know, all the guys would, were starting to buy, like, the Roper boots and the um, blue jeans, the Wrangler jeans and the cowboy shirts and the hats and the bolo ties. Hilarious. And the girls were wearing all fringy, you know, that was so funny. I remember line dancing to Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just don't think you'd understand. You all remember that? Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, so funny. My mom, anytime we were like in the car, she would make us stop. If that song came on, she would make us stop wherever we were at and get out, me and my cousin, and make us do that dance. It was so funny. And she didn't care if we were in the middle of town or what. Funny, funny, funny. Okay, next question. Do you remember your dreams? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, or sometimes, like, I won't remember it, like, that day. But, like... Days later, I might be like, oh, I had a dream and I forgot all about it. Next one, do you sing in the shower? Not always. Sometimes I'll, like, turn on some music when I get in the shower. And if the music's playing, then I'll sing along with that. But I don't just get in the shower and sing unless, like I said, there's music playing. Do you sleep with the lights on or off? I always sleep with the lights off. Um, I used to 
only be able to fall asleep though if the TV was on, like the lights from the TV were on and like I would turn the volume like way down so I could just barely hear the TV on for like white noise. But now, um, I usually just turn the TV off and sleep with the fan on and then I have, so it's kind of cool because my daughter's, my one-year-old, we still use a baby monitor with her. She sleeps in her room, but I keep the baby monitor on my nightstand and it's a video monitor. And she has in her bedroom a um, sound machine or noise machine, whatever you want to call it. It's like just static, you know, white noise. And so, because I sleep with her monitor on, then I hear her white noise machine. So, between the fan that I have going and the white noise machine, yeah, but no lights. Uh, next question, do you take any pills or medication daily? Well, geez, that's a bit of a personal question. Uh... 100% honesty, yes, I do take medication daily. I take uh, medication for my thyroid, and I take um, a an anxiety medication for anxiety and depression. No shame in my game, folks. If you need it, you need it. I'm all about natural remedies. I use a lot of essential oils and a lot of supplements and I swear by them. And uh, I did have a handle on my anxiety and stuff with natural remedies and oils and things like that for a long, long, long time. And then I got pregnant and all that went to H-E double in a hand basket. So um, I got put back on medication after I had my little girl. Like I said, no shame in my game. If you need it, you need it. Don't be ashamed of it. Do you prefer that people shoot straight with you or temper their words and why? So temper their words, I guess they mean like candy coat. Would I rather somebody be straight or was that a bug flying around? Yeah, there's like a little, I hope it's not a mosquito. It's been so hot and humid and wet that I've seen mosquitoes out. And that could have been a mosquito. Um, back to the question. Uh, candy coat or shoot straight with me? I would rather people shoot straight. Like, tell me like it is, but be kind about it. Like, you know what I mean? I'm one that can get my feelings hurt easy. Um, but at the same time, I don't want somebody to lie to me or candy coat something just to keep from hurting my feelings. I'm getting stuck on this sticky, sticky, sticky. Um, but yeah, that's the answer I will give. Okay, next question. Do you prefer Titanic or the notebook? Oh, gosh. So... I've, I've, I've only seen the movie Titanic once, and that was enough for me. Yes, it was an awesome movie, but that's, to me, it's one of those movies that, like, I only need to see it once. I don't need to watch it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like, you can only watch people freeze to death and die so many times, <laughs> you know? And once was enough for me. Uh, like I said, very good movie, but... I only saw it once and don't care to ever see it again. It was just sad and not a feel-good movie. The Notebook is a sad movie, too. Um, I think I would have to go with The Notebook. Mm. Next question, do you have a garden? Absolutely not. <laughs> I would love to have a garden. I'm just not good and I'm not disciplined enough to have a garden. I had one years ago with my sister. She, that was when she lived next door. And 
Um, yeah, the thing got taken over with weeds because I wasn't disciplined and diligent enough to get out there and weed it and take care of it. So, no, garden. Um, next question. B back to the garden thing, though. I, there, there was a guy that lived down the road from us. He doesn't live there anymore, but he always had the prettiest garden. It was right by the road. And every time I would drive by there, I would just ooh and awe over his garden. He had the perfect rows, no weeds. Everything was beautiful. Like, if I could be a gardener, I would want to be just like him. He did such a good job on his. Next question. Do you have a hidden dream that you've never shared with anyone? Hmm. Not really. I mean, I've always wished, I love to watch like singing competitions like, um, and like dance. There was a dance show that I used to watch. I haven't watched it in a long time. I think it was called So You Think You Can Dance. Something like that. I think that's what it was called. I used to watch that and like, I would get emotional watching some of those dances and I always thought, I wish that I could dance like that, but, um, I'm just not a gifted in that uh, arena, I guess you could say. Do you have a tattoo? No, I don't have any tattoos. Um, I always said if I did ever have a tattoo, I would want it to be something small and like on my foot, like the top of my foot. Um, for whatever reason, I was obsessed with the um, Dixie Chicks, the country music singer girls from Canada. I think they're Canadian. Um, but yeah, I was obsessed. They had their, they each of them had a tattoo on the top of their foot of little chicken feet. And I thought that was the cutest thing. Okay, next question. Do you have a whole lot of acquaintances or just a few very close friends? And why? I do have a whole lot of acquaintances. Um, and just a very few close friends. So, I have both. I mean, like, I've got a ton of people on my Facebook friends list that I would consider acquaintances that I'm not necessarily close friends with. Like, uh, but I do have a few close friends. Um, so I would say both, which I think is a good thing. Um... Do you have any allergies? Yes, I have allergies. I have an allergy to cats, like I said before. Um, I'm also allergic to shelled fish. So I can't have things like lobster or shrimp or crab, um, anything like that. There was one time, it was so funny, because like everybody in my family knows that I'm like allergic to shelled fish and so Anytime we go eat somewhere, um, if it's something that I'm not familiar with, I always ask, you know, because you never, ever, 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 ever know. And it's always better to be safe than sorry. So we were at Olive Garden and um, it was a Christmas little like get together that me and my sister and some cousins always go every year to eat around the holidays and we like go Christmas shop together and just hang out. Um, just a fun little struggle with my wax. I think I'll have to refill my wax. Um, but yeah, we would just get together every year and go eat. So one year we were at the Olive Garden and um, I had ordered, we had all ordered our um, orders, you know, sorry, I'm mashing this wax down in here, and, um, I ordered, I can't remember, it was, I usually get the same thing, I think it was, like, um, Alfredo or something, and, um, they had ordered some appetizers, and one of the appetizers was, I think, stuffed mushrooms, which looked amazing. And I put one of the stuffed mushrooms in my plate, you know, 
And when I looked at it, I was like, there's some little orange flecks in that. I was like, what is that? And nobody knew. And I was like, you don't think it's like crab or something, do you? And my cousin was like, no, that's not crab. Sorry about that. But she was like, no, that's not crab. I'm sure that's not crab. And about that time, the waitress came by, you know, and I said, can I ask you real quick, what does this have, these stuffed mushrooms have in it? And she started naming off what all was in it. And she said, and there's crab. And I was like, oh, really? And my cousin looked at me and she's like, oh my God, I almost killed you. <laughs> I almost killed you. So I put the crab or the mushroom back. Didn't eat it. I'm glad I asked. That wouldn't have been a fun experience. I don't know what would have happened. I don't know if I would have just like came out in some big gnarly rash or it's scary because some people, most people who have like allergies to shellfish, if they have it, they like their throats close up and their tongue swells up and all kinds of weird stuff. So I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna mess around. I'm not gonna take any chances on it. I don't wanna end up in the emergency room because I had crab meat. No, thank you. Um, the only other thing that I know of that I'm allergic to is just seasonal, like, outside, you know, pollen and that kind of stuff. Okay, next question. Do you have any birthmarks? Yes, um, on the back of my leg, like in the bend of my knee, on my right leg, I have like a little strawberry shaped birthmark. It was a lot more noticeable when I was younger and the older I get, the less noticeable it is, but it, I can still see it. And then myself and a lot of my, I think maybe all of my brothers and sisters, or brother and sisters, um, and some nieces and nephews have, um, like this birthmark on the back of our necks, um, like right at the hairline, that's kind of like red splotchy. Um, there's a name for that, but I can't remember what it's called. I don't remember if it was like something like stork bite or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, we all have that. And like most of the time it'll get like flaming red if we're you know, get too hot or uh, get mad or something like that. And I really don't, I mean, I assume it's a birthmark, but it's kind of funny that it's like hereditary. I don't know if birthmarks are actually hereditary, but. Okay, next question. Do you have pets? Yes, I've got my right terrier pepper and my Boston terrier poppy. Mm. Do you hold any convictions that you would be willing to die for? Um, I mean, I would die for my family, but as far as like convictions wise, I would say my salvation, um, my faith, like I'm so thankful that I live in a country where I can practice my faith. I know there are places, you know, where you can't. Um, but yes, I would die for my belief in my faith in God and, you know, Christianity. Um, do you carry a donor card? Mm, I don't know if it's an actual donor card, but it shows that I'm a donor on my driver's license. So, does that mean the same thing? Or do you actually have, like, are you supposed to have an actual donor card? Because if so, I don't have anything like that. It just says 
on my driver's license that I'm a donor. So that's a little concerning. Like, if something were to happen, would they not be able to use my stuffs? You know, if I don't have a donor card, but it says it on my license. I don't know, that's confusing. That was my ice maker. That thing can get loud and obnoxious sometimes. Okay, next question, I have to scroll up. I'm not getting much done. See, I told you I can't talk and diamond paint at the same time. Okay, next question. Next question. Do you have a best friend? If so, then who? So my I have a few what I'll call best friends. Um my first best friend is my sister. Um uh, my next best friend would probably be my nieces who are both who are all I mean I've got I said both but I've got more than one um more than two but I've got some nieces who are what I would call my best friends um they're older and have kids and so you know we relate to each other a lot more now than we did when they were a lot younger um obviously and then I have a cousin who is uh, so close to me that we're more like sisters. Um, so yeah, I'm blessed with my friends. Next question, do you believe ignorance is bliss? Yes, I do. <laughs> it says why or why not? I do believe ignorance is bliss. Um, not for any particular reason, but I mean, you know, when they say what you don't know can't hurt you or something like that, I, I kind of believe that to an extent. Um, next question, do you believe in love at first sight? Yes, I do. Um, because the first night that I met my husband, um, I had, had a girlfriend who set us up. And he was actually really good friends with the guy she was seeing. And so, and he was quite a bit older than me. I mean, he's like 10 years older, nine and a half years to be exact, older than me. So, but the first night that we met, she like set us up on like a little date um, at their house. And we played cards and just hung out and talked. But anyway... That night as I was leaving, um, it wasn't so much of a date for me and him as much as just a, hey, you know, Jenny's going to be there and you want to come hang out and meet her, you know? And so that's kind of how it happened. And so whenever I was leaving that night, she, my friend, walked me to the door because he didn't walk me to the door because it was not a date. Um... But I told her, she was like, so what do you think? What do you think? You know, tell me all about what do you think? And I was like, um, and I literally said, I'm going to marry that guy. And she was like, whatever, you're crazy. It's, I mean, you've only spent, I was there like a few hours, you know, but I knew and boom, six months later, we were engaged got married, been married for 20 plus years. Yes, I do believe in love at first sight. Okay, next question. Who performs the most random acts of kindness out of everyone you know? I would say my cousin, who I also just said was my BFF. Um, her name is, I'm just going to tell you, her name is Della. And she has, like, the most giving heart, like, like, to serve others, you know? She's just, that's who she is. That's how she was raised. Their entire family is that way. Um, 
they'll do anything to for anybody and they just have a heart to serve other people and I think that that's a gift and she's really good at it. Um, next question. Who sent the last text message you received? Hmm. Well, I'm recording with my phone so I can't look at it but I would think the last text that I received, I think, was from my husband. Um, if it was a Facebook message, then it would have been Mrs. Coffee from Mrs. Crochet and Coffee on YouTube. Um... So, Facebook message would have been her. Text message would have been my husband. Next question. Who was the last person you ate dinner with? My husband. Yeah. That was tonight. We had dinner tonight. Uh, he's the last person. I mean, we have been in this crazy um, pandemic thing, you know. And so, yeah, I I've not been out. And about much. Mm. Mm. Next question. Who was your first boyfriend or girlfriend? My first? Oh, I thought it was going to say my last. Who was your first boyfriend? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. That was so long ago. Let me think about it for a second. Um... Oh my gosh. I think, I can't remember what age, but I remember pacing back and forth on the telephone with the boyfriend. And I was pacing back and forth on the phone while I was talking to him um, because I wanted to ask my mom if I could go with him like I you know I was so young that I had to have permission to have a boyfriend you know so to speak um and if if my memory serves me correct that boy's name was Brian um but I do remember asking because he was like, wanted to know if I would be his girlfriend, you know. And I was like, I don't know. I need to ask my mom. Oh, I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. She's going to be mad at me. So my mom was standing in the kitchen. And we had one of those phones that, you know, that hung on the wall. And I had the cord that was like 50 million feet long. Where you could like walk from all, from every end of the house with the phone. Because the cord was so long. Yes, I'm ancient, old. But anyway. Um... I remember holding my hand, like, I'll use this as, like, the telephone, you know. So, I'm on the phone, and I remember holding my hand over the the part that you talk into, and was like, Mom, Mom, he wants to know if I can go with him. Go with him. And she knew exactly what I was talking about, but she was trying to be funny and, like, smart alecky, and she's like, I don't know. It depends on where you're going. Ha, 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 ha. And I was like, Mom, you know what I'm talking about. And so, you know, that was kind of like her breaking the ice at the same time and like being like, yes, you can have a boyfriend, but, you know, you're only going to talk to him on the phone, you know. Um, I don't remember how old I was. I was you know, probably the appropriate age for a little girl to have her first little boyfriend, you know. Otherwise, my mom would have forbid that I was even on the phone with a boy, so. Okay, next question. Who was my first celebrity crush? Oh, my gosh. My first celebrity crush was with Michael on Michael Jackson. 
100%. We did not have cable growing up. We lived so far out in the country, and honest to goodness, I live in the same house that I grew up in, and we still do not have cable in this, like the cable company, the line start, stops like literally a half mile up the road or down the road. And um, so yeah, we did not have cable growing up. We had regular TV with literally like three or four channels. And um, I remember uh, watching the Thriller um, video on TV. And I don't know why it was on regular TV that time, that night. I don't know if it was like a special or something, like a late night TV special. And they played the Thriller video. And I loved Michael Jackson anyway, um, the music and him. But when I saw that video, I was like, oh, whenever he's like got his arms around his girlfriend, like at the movie theater or the drive-in or wherever they're at, you know, I was like, oh, I wanted to put his arms around me. I, I just loved Michael Jackson. He was my first crush. Probably my next biggest, biggest crush would have been Kirk Cameron. Um, yeah, total Kirk Cameron fan. Still am. And then next in line would be any of the boys, especially Jonathan. I fell in love with Jonathan from New Kids on the Block. Hello. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next question. Who was your first friend in college? I didn't go to college, so no friends in college. Who would you tell first... Ooh, good Lord. It says, who would you tell first if you found a dead body in your garden? <gasps> what? Oh, my God. I would probably tell first the entire neighborhood because I would be screaming at the bloody top of my bloody lungs, screaming bloody murder. There's a dead body in my yard. There's a dead body. And then the whole neighborhood would know. Like, I wouldn't be able to, like, or I'd probably pass the slick out right there. And then somebody would walk up and think there was two dead people laying there. I don't know what I, who, who would I tell first if I found a dead body in my garden? If my husband was home, I would tell him. If he was at work, I would probably uh, call 911 and then run to my neighbor's house. I don't know. Hmm. However, if you watch, I don't want to be giving stuff away in case you do watch it, but you're behind. But if you watch Good Girl, The Good Girls, or is it just Good Girls? I think it's just Good Girls. Um, yeah. They would have a few different people they would tell first if they found the dead body in their garden. <laughs> what is something that amazes you? Oh, um, this might sound corny and cliche or whatever you want to call it, but I'm always amazed whenever, uh, hold on, I have to hit this button on my phone. I hope it didn't mess the video up. So I had to, my battery's getting low. Um, but... Um, something that always amazes me, um, and I said I didn't want to sound corny or whatever, but whenever you, like, see a super, super duper pretty, uh, sunset or sunrise, or when the clouds are that, like, purpley, orange, pink, cotton candy, that's what it reminds me. I always call it a cotton candy sky. Uh, things like that amaze me. Um, yeah, I'm always in amazement. Like, I always call it God's handiwork. Like, just 
most beautiful things you've ever seen. What is something you look for in a partner? Well, physical appearance, you know, is usually the first thing you notice. Um, but they absolutely have to have, be funny. They have to have a good sense of humor. And they have to be able to make me laugh. And my husband does that on a daily basis. So, uh, next one is, what is the name of your first pet? So, I actually did an unboxing video the other day of um, the Star Or kit called Stand By Me. And I'll uh, link that or put that up in the, up there. Um, if you want to check that out, but it was called Stand, it's called Stand By Me, and it's like a rainbow looking sky with, um, like an out, not like an outline, but like a shadow of someone and their dog. And it totally reminded me of someone, of, you know, uh, someone being there with their pet as they're getting ready to cross over the rainbow bridge, you know. That's what it reminded me of. And I loved it because it made me think of my first ever pet. Um, and she was a little collie. And her name was Nasty. And the reason that I called her Nasty is because she would always, because we lived in the country back then, you know, when I was little, um, it wasn't that big a deal for dogs to run loose everywhere. <clears throat> um, not like it is nowadays, but anyway, she was a little collie that ran everywhere and through the pond and the ditches and who knows where. And when she would come home in the evening, she was always filthy dirty, like filthy dirty from head to toe. And so I would always say, Ooh, you're nasty. So that's what I ended up naming her was Nasty. Nasty boy, don't mean a thing. Do, 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 do. Oh, you nasty boy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, next one is what scares you about aging? <sighs> so, um, I think probably death. Dun, 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 is the most scariest, I think. Thinking about that as I get older. Um, but it does kind of freak me out that I start seeing, like, fine lines and wrinkles. And, like, my hands start looking old. And, like, you know, I'm, like, just crepey, old-looking skin. That scares me. Ooh, makes me nervous. Uh, I never would have thought that I would ever be like the person that would have any kind of cosmetic surgery, like facelifts or anything, but whew, I mean, we'll see how things go, but if I'm in another 20 years, if uh, things go downhill fast and I have the money, don't think I won't be calling Cher and saying, hey, sh -sh -sh, give me the name and number of the doctor that you see because you look good, girl. Cher is fine. I'm serious, I'm not even kidding. She looks so dang good. Um, There was someone else that I, me and my husband was talking about the other day that I said looked really, really good, and now I can't remember who it is. Hmm. I can't remember who that was. But yeah, Cher. I mean, how old is she now? But dang, she looked good. She looks better than half these 25-year-old girls running around right now. Okay, next one. How difficult is it for you to be honest, even when your words may be hurtful or unpopular? It is hard for me to do that. Um... But it depends on the situation. I mean, if it's just, you know, I mean, oh my goodness, I think my son just fell out of the bed. 
Did you hear that crash boom? I'm actually recording at night time and everybody's in the bed. That's why it's super quiet. And I think he just fell out of the bed. <laughs> um, where were we at? Oh, honesty. Um, and again, it depends for me. Like if somebody were to be like, does this outfit make me look fat? Of course, I'm going to be like, no. I mean, unless it's totally repulsively obvious that it looks awful on the person, would I, you know, I'm not going to be mean and be like, oh, no, you need to go change your clothes. That isn't what I mean. But I, if it is something that's like, I don't want to say life or death, because that's pretty obvious. But, I mean, if it's something that... I think is really, really important, then I would very much be honest and not care if it hurts their feelings, um, if it's for their benefit, you know. I'm trying to be quiet because I don't know if the boy did fall out of the bed, if he's like awake and listening to me, probably wondering what's mom doing and they're talking to herself. Mm. Hold on just a second. Let me see. Uh, how many pairs of shoes do you currently own? Oh, gosh. Not a whole lot. Uh, if you watched my first book and chat, you probably heard the story about me not being high maintenance and how I literally walked out of a pair of shoes. Like, the sole literally fell off because I wear my shoes so long, but... They literally fall off. Um, yeah. Uh, if I had to guess how many pairs of shoes I have, including like dress shoes and tennis shoes, flip-flops, sandals, that kind of thing, um, I would say five or six pair. And to a lot of people, they're probably like, oh, how in the world can you get along with only five or six pairs of shoes? Well, you only wear one pair of shoes at a time, right? So, I don't have to have 50 pairs of shoes. Now, if you go to my sister's house, who I also described as being the pack rat, you'll find many, many, many pairs of shoes. And many, many, many pairs of those shoes have probably never even been worn. She's pack pack. She loves shoes and she loves purses. Now, purses, for me, on the other hand, yeah, I can have 52 million purses. Don't bother me then. I love purses. Shoes, I don't care about the shoes, but I care about the handbag. Okay, how many rings before you answer the phone? <laughs> mm, I don't know. I guess it depends on, really don't depend on who it is. Uh... I guess however many rings it takes before I can get to the phone. Uh, if it's somebody I don't want to talk to, then I just hit the button to dismiss the call or whatever you call it on my cell phone. How old were you when you learned how to ride a bike? Oh, wow. I was probably between 8 and 10. Um, maybe I was younger than that. I remember I was riding on the school bus, so I was in school age. Ten seems too old. Um, so surely it was before that, before I was ten. But I remember getting off the school bus on my birthday and seeing my mom and dad standing on the porch with a brand new bike. And I was so excited. I got on that bike and it had, you know, it was a little huffy bike and it was all pink and chromed out and had the little tassels and the basket and all that, you know, and got on that thing and went straight headlong into the telephone pole. Busted a little red reflector and everything. I was so upset. But yeah. 
Needless to say, I guess I hadn't really learned how to ride <laughs> at that point. And then one other time I had actually flipped the bike because my front wheel went into a hole in the ground where there used to be a rose bush that my dad had accidentally ran over with the lawnmower and killed. And so there was a big hole there. And I came barreling around the corner of the house and ran straight into that hole and the bike just, you know, did that number. Okay, next question. And I think after this one, I'll call it a night. Um, which store would you choose to max out your credit card? Oh, for heaven's sake. <sighs> um, hmm. I would say there are a few. Um, Hobby Lobby probably would be the, the place. And um, maybe also even Diamond Art Club. I love Diamond Art Club. I would like buy all of the canvases that they've got. Um, but other than Diamond Art Club, yeah, I would say Hobby Lobby for sure. Because I love everything there. I'm really big into farmhouse decor and all those pretty like wooden signs that they have like for walls. They're beautiful. I love them. Um, now I'm gonna go in there and like spend all the money. But can't do that. But if I was like forced to max out my credit card on a store, that one would be it. And I would do it happily. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Well, I am going to hop off here. Like I said, didn't get much done. However, I did get all the three tens covered. Um, this canvas has a lot of three tens. This one was full up to here, and I've used all but these. And then I still have another big bag um, to use. So, yeah, Mandy Manzano's... Um, Canvases, um, her diamond paintings tend to have a lot of black trim. And I enjoy working, like when I do a section, I like to do the three tens to get that out of the way, but then it kind of also um, creates little groups for me to work in, you know, like an outline, I guess. But her face is pretty. There's her eyebrows and her eyes. Her lips are outlined, her neckline, um, and this is all of her hair. The details of her hair is so pretty. I can't wait to get a little bit further up, especially right in here. You know, when I get her done, I'll be excited to get working on the beast's face. So, yeah, it's been fun, 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 fun. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. I'm going to hop off and talk to you guys soon. I appreciate all of the um, likes. If you hit the like button, I appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel. And um, see you soon. Bye.